So here's what we're going to do. We're going to try for six minutes, okay? Six minutes. So a function, so here's the definition of a function. It's a mapping or a pairing of an input to a single output. So each input can only have one output. And so you see that in a couple ways, okay? So like sometimes you have like an, a map of an input to an output, and it will literally be a mapping like this. So it might be boxes, it might be circles, something like that. So like 3, 2, 1, and let's say, let's call it negative 4. It doesn't matter. These are the numbers you put into the function, and they're mapped to 0, 4, negative 3, and 7. So this is going to be a function as long as 3 only goes to one number. It doesn't matter which number, but it just goes to one number. And if 2 only goes to one number, it's still a function. So it doesn't have to go to the next. It could go all the way to, whoa, there we go. Overshot the target and backed up. <laughs> all right? So as long as 2 only goes to one number, and if 1 only goes to one number, it can go to the same exact number as another, and 4 goes to one number. So four, negative 4 goes to 4. 1 goes to 0, so it is 3, and 2 goes to 7. That's a function. Here's what would make it not a function. Because you see, the key, the key thing right here is I have installed my highlighter. I know, I'm just teasing you. You didn't. Each input goes to a single output. So I'm going to change this to be a not function. Now it's a not function because 3 is an input and it goes to two outputs so it's no longer a function. It was a function, now it's not. Okay? Alright, now on a graph X is the input and Y is the output. Right? So if you had something that looked like this well that's a fancy looking curve right there. This would be a function because all of the values of x, like this value of x, only has one value of y. Do you see what I mean? Like, I could pick any point. Like, here's another point. This x right here only has one output, only one value of y. And, like, this value for x only has one output for y. Do you see? So each input only has one output. And it's kind of hard to see, like, that this is a function by the graph, but if I show you a not function on the graph, it's going to be obvious. You ready? Okay, Ivan, I'm going to show you a not function on the graph. So here's here's y, here's x, right? Here's a not function. This is a not function. There's only one place that an input has one output. It's right there. This value of x only has one output, but like, do you see this value of x right here? It's got two outputs. Do you see? There's two outputs for this one input. That's not a function. So there's a shortcut for this called the vertical line test. And it says if you can draw a vertical line anywhere through your graph and it touches the curve more than once, then it's not a function. And the reason that is is because a vertical line would be like x equals that number. So it, when x equals that number, if it has two outputs, then then it's a violation of the definition. So if it, pa if it passes what? Passes through your curve more than one time. Yes, sir. So if that would be upside down. So if this one was turned sideways. Oh wait. No, that one. Oh, if it was turned the other way. So if it was looking like this, right? Yeah. That would be okay. That would be a function. Because I couldn't draw a vertical line anywhere and I would touch the curve more than one time. Like everywhere everywhere that I draw a vertical line, it only crosses this curve one time. So this is a function, yes. This one no. Doing good so far? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Oh, that took oh that took a ton of our time. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna shoot for ten minutes, not six, because we're at 4:45. <laughs> All right. Um, now I think you guys, this part's pretty easy, right? Y is a function of x, right? And the way we write this, 
that's an English statement. The way we write that same thing in math is with that. We could also do it with a different letter. You can use any letter, but this just means like this is the the letters like the name, and these are just functions of x. So y equals f of x. So like in a graph, instead of having this labeled y, sometimes it'll be labeled f of x. So now, let's say we had a function like this right here. Oh my gosh, a fraction? Well, Halloween is coming up, and this is scary. Getting tuned up, tuned up. Okay, um, if I had this function right here, then all this means is like x is the input. And all you, whatever number would be written right there, I would just replace x with it. So like if I had something like, oh, I don't know, um, 2, for example. All this means is in my function f, wherever I see x, I replace it with a 2. So do you see? Like, do you see how the 2 replaced x? So that means in the function itself, wherever you see x, you just put a 2 there. We can put parentheses because, you know, that kind of shows us we're plugging in. So that's 3 over 3, and that's equal to 1. So what this means is f of 2 equals 1. It's kind of like a, a coordinate. It's an ordered pair, 2 comma 1, which on a graph would be right there, 2 comma 1. So this and this mean the same thing. They mean, they both mean that when x is 2, y equals 1. Good so far? All right. Onward and upward. Domain and range. Domain is the set of all possible inputs. And range is the set of all possible outputs. Inputs are the x's, right? And outputs are the y's. So like in the first example we did, oh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and redraw it. Like we had this for in and we had this for out. So we had, like when we still had it being a function. And so we had 3 to 0, we had 2 to 0, we had negative 4 to 4, and we had, oh, I messed it up. That's okay. We had 1 to, but we'll just do this. It's good enough. I messed it up from our original, from the original, remember 2 went to 7. Whoa, Edgar, you alright, buddy? Check this out. The domain is a set of all the possible inputs. So the domain is just this right here. That's it. And the range is just this right here. So the domain would be, put it in order, negative 4, 1, 2, and 3. And the range would be mm, 0, 4, and 7. Do you see the 3 doesn't have a, a pair? It's not really an output. So the range is just that. Doing good? All right. Now. Let's talk about something kind of, kind of funky. We're gonna we're gonna do a couple lines on the same graph right here. If this was five, I don't know if you remember this or not, but this equation would be x equals five. Do you see? It's not a function. It's not a function, right? Because this one input of five has infinitely many outputs, right? But we can still talk about this domain and range. The domain, I guess the domain of this is just all of the inputs. It's just five. Do you see what I mean? That's the only number you can plug into that. Whereas the range, the output, is from negative infinity to positive infinity. All right. Now, Ivan, we're going to do another one. Ready? 
Ivan, we're going to say this is negative 6 right there, and we're going to do a horizontal line. This line, you might not remember, but I hope you do. It's y equals negative 6. The domain for this one is all numbers, all real numbers. So it's from, it's from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, some classes want you to write it a certain way like this. Some uh, There's all kinds of different ways to write that. For me, for right now, you could even write all real numbers are the domain. Like, every single number along the x-axis is covered here. And But the range, the range is just negative 6. That's it just negative 6. There's no other output. Oh, I'm over time. Dang. I hate my life. Look, it's 1053. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's okay. Almost done. Let's see uh, two, two more examples of domain and range because they get kind of tricky. The thing is though, here's the thing you got to know. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter what's shown on the on the graph. Because arrows mean something. Arrows mean that th that graph keeps going on forever and ever. Amen. So like if we had a, a graph like, like this. Let's say this was 9. These arrows mean that it keeps going up forever and ever. Amen. And you see, as they go up, it gets wider and wider, right? The domain, it's all of the x's. But it doesn't matter about the x-intercepts. It doesn't matter where it crosses. It means if you could take x and you could draw a line straight up if you would run into your graph, then that is part of the domain. And since this gets wider and wider, even though it goes way wider than the graph, it keeps going wider forever. So the domain's all real numbers. Not all real hashtags, all real numbers. Yeah, Edgar? You good? It's not like, like here's what's going to trip you up. They're going to give you a graph like this, and they're going to give you some numbers. What you're going to say is you're going to say the domain is negative 3 and 7. That's, the, that's not the domain. That's the intercepts. And then for the range, here's what you're going to do wrong. You're going to say the range is 9. But it's not. The range is all of the y-axis. All everything like if you could pick a spot, it's not because see this on the y-axis right here, it doesn't cross your graph. It does like neither does this. This will never cross your graph down here. Not until you get here at zero, do you have a value that's an output. Do you see? So the range is from zero to infinity, and it's to infinity because it keeps going up. So all inputs, all of the x's, all outputs, all of the y's. Questions so far? Got one more example of this. Oh no. Let's say let's say this coordinate was negative five, negative one. That coordinate right there is negative five, negative one. And let's say it was a parabola. Oh, that's co oh, so ugly. Oh, I hate this. I hate my life. <laughs> Ivan's like, I hate your life too. Thanks, Ivan. Wow, you hear him not deny it? Huh? <laughs> All right, Ivan. Check this out. I know. I'm giving you a hard time. So, Ivan, let's say we had a parabola that was just going down like this. Right? Let's say it crossed down here at negative 11 or something, right? So it's not really crossing it, it crosses there, but then it keeps going. Right. So this one's confusing. Like, the, it never crosses the x-axis, but that doesn't matter. Like, you have a number, like, right here you could plug in for x, and it does have an output. If you go down far enough, it's going to be there. If you put a number here for x, if you go down far enough, the arrow says that it keeps going. So eventually it's going to have, like, a coordinate and this will be a number. This will be the input. Do you see what I mean? So the domain is all real numbers again. The range is tricky. The range, like there's nothing up here for the range. 
and there's nothing here for the range. There's nothing here for the range. There's nothing until you get right here. That's the first output is negative 1. The very first output you have is negative 1. Now you got to put them in order though because all like like here there's an output and negative 11 is obviously an output. So it's from negative infinity all the way up to negative 1. And we're writing that notation kind of like we did with inequalities, remember? We did that in this class, right? Or no? Am I going crazy? Oh. Yeah? I could be going crazy and be right, though. Man, so I am way over time. 15 minutes and 36 seconds. Sad story.